Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Hamamoto. It is April 3rd, year 2023, 4.30 p.m. PDT. I thought I would sneak in a quick 30-minute piece to uh, lead into uh, John Rolachlan's show. I didn't want to run over it because um, typically I run about a, an hour show, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, but I want to make sure that I don't intrude on his airtime, especially uh, in this crucial time when he's trying to uh, transition his audience to the new platform and the better platform. I'm still trying to negotiate that myself. And uh, anyway, th that's the reason why I'm showing up at these at these odd times um, as well. So since I have such a little time, I'll accede to some of the criticisms that you might have heard or have in your mind that I just take too long in getting to the point. Well, if you've had the fortune of seeing or the good fortune or the opportunity to see the seven part episode, I guess it's season one. I don't know if there's going to be a second season, but um, it's a seven part series. Each, each documentary installment is roughly one hour long. And um, I came across an article by, uh, the other day by one of the journalists I really, really respect. You know, I'm always promoting um, excellent journalists, investigators, not the pop-up pundits, you know, the ones who just kind of appear and they, they, they pop up and they also pop down. Kirby Summers, she's been there. She's, you know, for better or worse, she's, she's seen what it's like uh, on the inside. Um, we've had different experiences, but I've seen the the dark side of total institutions. In, in this case, we're talking about the Catholic Church, but I, I was also in a total institution it's called the university. Total institution like the army, the military, prison system, and uh, of course, uh, the clergy. These are systems where just about everything in your life is dictated to you and provided for you in, in, in the guise of service to a higher purpose or comfort, whatever, or in the case of prisoners, you know, we have to keep you off the street because you're bad people, right? So th that's what I mean by total institutions. So in this documentary, you're seeing the convergence of two total institutions, and it makes perfect sense. Now that I went back and reviewed the documentary series, The Keepers, I watched part of it before. I thought it was a little plotting, right? And maybe you tuned out early yourself. I bailed on it because I'm tired of these Netflix shows that don't go anywhere and at least they leave you hanging. Now, this show's uh, quite um, compelling, but it does leave you hanging in a way that's politically important. And I'll be less cryptic as we go along. But I'm into writers. Uh, we talked about Jim Keith and his martyrdom. And um, John Potash is another person. I, I posted one of his most recent pieces uh, on, on my pa Patreon site. I definitely would not be able to do that on TubeView. So you might want to check that out as well. Um, so whenever I see his byline show up, yeah, I, I click that on. I want to see what he's up to. And sure enough, he talks about this film, which made me want to sit through. I The whole day yesterday, I thought I was just going to reacquaint myself with it, you know, refresher, right? Because I thought I knew it. And, and, and you don't know it. You think you know it because you're not looking at it with the same eyes. But after reading his article, I looked at it from an entirely different perspective. All right, there's a big lesson in this. Don't ever be overconfident in your skills or, or your, your learning, your ability, or the, the comprehensive of, of your knowledge base because it's always subject to revision. And that's good. It's good. All right. Uh, and he, he certainly jolted me by this article. And if, uh, let me give you the, the title of it. He's a, I guess I would call him an associate or a colleague of uh, Je uh, Jeffrey Kuzmarov, who I've had on the show uh, a couple of times. He also does incredible um, investigative, original uh, investigative work. And now he's the managing editor of uh, Covert Action Magazine and the the articles and the type of writers he's, he's attracting is just like taking the publication, which had become a little staid and a little bit stale, I think, 
uh, over the years. I kind of lost interest in it. It was really big in the 60s and through the 70s before the age of the internet. But uh, due to the generational changeover, people like Kuzmarov is, is a fairly young man, but he has learned all the lessons. Potash, I don't know how old he is. I think he's probably closer to my age. But the point is, is that this knowledge base is being kept alive and it's transferring in a way that's highly productive uh, for you and me, just ordinary, everyday people. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, what happened in 1969, there was a Catholic nun, a Sister Catherine Sesnick, it might be pronounced Chesnick, I think it's more accurately Chesnick, but Sesnick is sort of the anglicized pronunciation in the doc documentary. And uh, she turned up missing one day, and it uh, was about a, I think it was about a month, uh, maybe two months before her body turned up. And uh, this is where an incredible chain of horrors started to be uh, yanked on for a period of forty-five years, thanks to the true citizen journalists. Her former students redeemed the death, the sacrifice of the beloved Mary, I'm sorry, uh, sister. I'm always thinking of Sister Mary so-and-so, but her name was Catherine. There was no Mary in her name, uh, Catherine Sesnick. And they redeemed her. And they, they think it's they're, 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 like it's a defeat by the end of seven, the conclusion, because the scummy state attorney general of the state of Maryland, black woman, not, not that her ethnicity has anything to do with it, but she's corrupt as hell. I mean, it's Maryland. Come on, Spiro Agnew. Maybe you're not old enough to remember that. Uh, Baltimore, particularly, maybe more to your recent memory is someone like uh, Nancy Pelosi, right? And her gangster husband, right? Uh, so amongst criminal... Uh, cities this 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 particular city ranks very high but the big difference is maryland was founded as a catholic state by john carroll right to escape ostensibly religious persecution and of course what this one of the lessons here is that um, the struggle for liberty uh, liberty oft times almost inevitably deteriorates to just perversion decadence and pure evil and this is what we see in this documentary. And I'll be more specific um, as we end uh, the 30 minutes here. But it's the convergence of two total institutions. We're talking about 69. And if you're not old enough to remember this, uh, everybody, you know, especially the kids, uh, was very respectful of authority. Policemen, Priests, nuns, teachers, too. Yeah, there was no smart mom and a teacher. Come on, or the principal. Yeah, no way. So, you know, if you don't understand, have a difficult time understanding it, you know, I, I feel sorry for you. But um, so I'm just trying to establish the fact we're dealing with a different time. And also, this was in, in the days before we, you and me, ordinary people, have benefited from the investigative research all of these great writers that I have featured here on this little humble channel, right? Not the ones who are the repeaters who keep showing up on these channels. So obviously uh, mommy, rich mommy and daddy bought, bought this guy a channel to feature some guy who's stealing the work of Graham Hancock and uh, Robert Ro Boval. And he's probably never even been to Egypt, never been anywhere, but he's like going on like he's an expert on, oh yeah, the pyramids are much older, you know. Just, come on, this is this is sickening. Just because he, he has a he has a man bun and he's, and he's younger, right? Because this is the, the cohort that these psyops people realize they're looking for the youth, and they're looking for, and which is not not bad about that. But the youth has to come up with something original, not something that's propaganda of the older generation who run them. I bet you most of these people they're. Their um, their parents are you know very similar to the profile of of uh, Whitney Webb. Just as an example, I'm just saying this because you know you know her name by now. <laughs> this one video, I I was surprised. I don't look back, but I I saw uh, the Kirby Summers video, the expose on Whitney Webb. It had like ten thousand views, probably more than that now. So I said, okay, yeah, all right. 
there's some hope for tube you and the the amount of time where these bullshit artists can can flourish and the and the time they uh, they're busted that that time gap has really really shortened and the same way is true for this documentary now that being said i'm not imputing any sort of malign or deceitful motives to the documentary filmmakers the writers uh, however, I am skeptical of the fact because these are supposed to, you know, these, you know, their parents are probably bankers. You know, you don't become a filmmaker unless your daddy is filthy rich and your mama is a socialite. Those are the filmmakers. Those are the novelists. Those are the agents in, in New York City. Those are the ones who work in publishing. Right? These are called um, uh, trust fund babies because you don't, unless you're, you know, super huge like. Uh, well, I won't give any names, um, but unless you're really prominent, you're you're not going to get any attention at all. So, but that being said, they missed out on the most important connection in the keepers, and I encourage you to watch it on YouTube. I tried to download some sections. I even tried to do it on Patreon. I looked at it later. I said, "Oh my gosh, it's it's in Japanese." You know, it's. <laughs> So I have to readjust the settings here. I just recently re-upped my subscription. I'm trying to, um, and I, I wanted to have some, some, um, you know, a little bit of a show and tell here for you. I don't think I'm going to get get around to it, which is good. I think it forces me to just stay on topic here without, you know, Netflix ruling the roost. So you, you can check it out on yourself. You, most of you have Netflix accounts and while i'm at it I'm, I'm saying netflix is a very important asset and there must be a reason why indie media you know your alex jones and your you know whoever else you know they're always slagging on netflix it's because they take off they take tension attention away from all the name callers and the the uh it's just a really cheesy sort of race baiting that they do because they provide substantive information in analysis. It may not be something that we might agree on or accept, but they do take time. In this case, it's a seven-part series that forces you to consider it. Now, that having been said, I have to go to John Potash again, who wrote a book, by the way, I'm not getting the title exactly uh, right. He wrote a book on uh, Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls and who killed Bob Marley. He was one of the first guys there. He was doing this kind of work. And then all of a sudden, Dave McGowan shows up. He disappeared after I started saying publicly, this guy's a, he's a fraud. You know, Dave McGowan is, is trying to bury the 60s, the organic part of the 60s. And uh, he, he, he pretty much disappeared. If you ever hear an interview with him, I heard one from uh, this one woman. She's surprisingly, she's still around, Sophia Smallstorm. She's in, interviewed me. I've been on her show. And uh, it's not a real name, by the way. Um, and she comes from super international wealth. You know, I make these statements just because I, I can suss this type of information out. And if you're wealthy, that's fine. If you're, if you're a trust fund baby, that's great. You know, good for you. Uh, but don't try to pass yourself off as a man of the people or, you know, a woman, female proletariat. In fact, the most, one of the fundamental problems I had with the left and the Marxists in academia is that they all came from super wealthy families. Super well. I said, gee, I thought Marxism was about the working class and the proletariats. No, that was just their moral high ground, right? Just like the boule, the black bourgeoisie of which uh, Willie Brand and Kamala Harris, they said, oh, I'm a poor, oppressed black woman. No, you're part of the boule, and your job is to keep up, keep down the fellow black people, right? They got an Asian American too. Right. And I wrote a book on it, Surgeon's Empire. So don't, let's not be fooled by that. And they have for every different group. They have them for, for GLBTQ. They have them for the transsexual people. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's show a little bit more sophistication instead of just automatically falling for the hype. All right. So, hey, there's a lot of people in the live, in the live stream. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I, I take that as a vote of confidence. So, uh, I have 15 minutes to, to give you the real <laughs> the real skinny. What I'm going to do is, because I can't post these on uh, Tube you, so I'm going to post it on Patreon, the article, so you can read it. I don't have enough time to really go through this. Uh, and you know this stuff, and it's going to really, really 
click with you. Most of my, my viewers already have the fundamentals and more down. They're not newbies. They've been studying and looking at and reading, keeping up on this material for years and years and years. Or if they're more recent, they're, they're, they, they, they've come up to speed very quickly, right? But um, to the point, okay, Potash did, did, the, did that um, book. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that Jim Keith co-authored a book with Kim, Kim, Ken, K-E-N-N -N, Thomas, who was his publisher, called Octopus. They co-authored that book. And before that video was cut off, I was trying to show it. And Ken Thomas said he thinks it was a suspicious death. I was going to mention the book, The Octopus, about the death of Danny Casolaro. What was Danny Casolaro? He was an investigative journalist. All right. The real ones, not the ones who are lauded by the so-called Columbia School of Journalism, the ones that come out of the Newhouse School or whatever these little, they're all setups from these media, you know this by now, from the media magnates, the monopoly. I think the last independent voice that we had, and he's been gone for quite a while, was Ben Bagdikian, who was the head of the journalism school at UC Berkeley. And he came from the, the world of journalism. But but since that time, there hasn't been any, there's had been a peep about the takeover, the hijacking of the fourth right journalism, the fifth column journalism in uh, academia, All right? So, so long as we're talking about academia, let me transition to this real sleazy uh, scumbag. His name is um, Maskell. I'm not even going to call him Father Maskell. I don't want to give him the dignity of a title. I will call other priests, other people who are from the Society of Jesus. I will call you Father. I'll just, you know, uh, Malachi Martin. Yeah, but this, this guy is a pervert. And he was complicit in a murder. He was complicit more specifically in the murder of sister Catherine Sesnick because she was very, she's only 26 years old. So she was very close to the students who were roughly 16, 18. And they just thought the world of her. Just, if nothing else, watch the first episode. You can see the love and the mutual respect. And she had a real mission, a Christian an authentic Catholic, not the perverted Catholic. Uh, and by the way, this this I think is very much related to Vatican II and the perversion of um, the so-called Catholic Church. Once upon a time, it was a legitimate institution, just like once upon a time in America, most of these institutions were legitimate. And what happened is the process uh, that's been theorized, it has a term for it, it's called state capture. Right, some jerkwad who thinks he you knows what he's talking about calls it elite capture. Well, in elite capture, that's a redundancy. Elite is already there. Right, it's called state capture, and that's where you put all your your men and your women in the right position, including the state attorney attorney general of Maryland. So anything that comes up against the church, the Catholic Church in Maryland, is going to be squashed. And that's what happened to the investigations and all the queries made by. Um, uh, citizens, these were students who had remembered their beloved teacher all those years. And in fact, uh, here, here's an irony for you. Facebook was used as a tool. I think that's one of the reasons why Facebook has been kind of phased out. They've tried to replace it with TikTok because it started to bite the globalists, right? Uh, Priscilla Chan, I don't know, even like to talk about Zuckerberg because it's Priscilla Chan who's the brains of the operation. She's the front. Um, um, but back then, they created a community of independent investigators, including retired teachers, retired detectives, retired policemen, and as well as uh, people who were interested in doing a lot of um the nuts and bolts work that's requir required. And the two women are behind are really incredible. What happened is that eventually the word got out to this one, one, one woman and she emerged. Her name was, the, she eventually gave her real name, but she was known as J Jane Doe. It took a long time to really, as you can imagine, come to grips with what she had been through. She had been molested regularly and raped by uh, a mascal, right? The perverted demonic uh, mascal who would also bring in local politicians and police officers, high echelon ones, and uh, stand at the door while they were uh, raping and molesting the students at uh, Archbishop Keogh High School. It gets very dark. It's very sinister, right? 
and uh, he was you know later reported and then true, true, to, true to form the the archdiocese um, you know moved him around here and there they sent him out of state they said oh he's going to go through rehab and all this stuff but he died a natural death however one of the people who were investigating him said she went to see him face to face he was only 60 years old and she said it was a blank no one was home his immortal soul had left his body so that's the payoff for you evil ones out there who think you're going to get away with this, right? It's never too late for you to change. It's never too late for, for you to uh, reform yourself and, and to alert other people that you're in the, uh, on the wrong course because you will wind up in the same fashion, right? And um, as, as difficult as it was for, for these women who are subjected to sexual abuse, and they were about at least two or three, two dozen, I think closer to 35, who came forward. Those are the ones that, that said we were victimized. They got some sense of justice, even though the prosecution didn't go in their favor, because now they have the information. Now they have truth. And that is bigger. That's more powerful. That's mightier than the puny human court systems, uh, system, the civic uh, court system, that's nothing compared to God's law, to natural law. That's some that's a that's a mindset change that all of us here in America have to make instead of saying, please, please, courts, we're gonna sue you, get run at Reiner Fulnick, we're gonna stop 5G, or Dr. Simone Gold, you know, who's also an attorney, we're gonna sue you. And the, this they want you, they, you know, these people, there's 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 a phrase that they really like to hear, like, oh, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. They run the court system. You know that. All right. But the thing is, is that these women had files and files of material, testimony. I hope they publish it. I hope it goes out there. It's distributed. And as far as I'm concerned, they did an incredible job, and they did it organically. You know, no one gave them permission to do it. They had no training as such. They were, you know... Um, I guess they'd been college educated, right? They had they had research skills. They were able to piece together. Most people do, by the way. People are able to ration or uh, reason and, and uh, apply rational arguments to, to situations. Okay, that having been said, you're not going to come up with an explanation with missing information. And this is what, since we're closing up on a 30 minute point right here. And this is the, the missing information that was not given to us by the directors or the director of the film, The Keepers. And again, I'm not impugning, impugning any uh, malign motives to the sky, but I don't put it past anybody. I don't care who he or she is. All right. But according to John Potash, who I've been talking about for the last uh, 10 minutes or so, this guy, pervert uh, Maskell, the guy whose spirit had left him before his body uh, deteriorated and became uh, food for the maggots and worms, right? As it turns out, um, he comes right out of MK Ultra, and he was the counselor for Archbishop Keo High School, and he had open access to all these 16, 17, 18 year old girls. And these are the brightest and the best, right? Because they you're taking, uh, it's a competitive uh, examination, admission, and they're on the track, you know, to become professionals. So th there's another lesson in this, just because you think that you have a class advantage or you think that you're of a certain gender or racial or ethnic uh, uh, identity is going to insulate you from these problems, you have some some really big catching up to do in terms of facing reality, right? Everybody's going to face a moment where they said, wow, I'm being mind fucked. What do I do? And of course, they went to all the, the usual people, the, the archdiocese officials and the state. And of course, you know, you and I know they're not going to go anywhere. Oh, that's very interesting. Why don't you write us a report here? Well, can you establish? They send you on all these fools errands, right? But nonetheless, they have a paper trail there. So what happened? So what did 
<laughs> boils down to, according to Potash, and I'll put put the the link or the actual article on my Patreon here, is that uh, uh, Maskell came right out of uh, MKL. We're talking about Maryland now, right? And most of you know when someone says Johns Hopkins University, that rings bells, right? Oh yeah, Johns Hopkins Medical Institute, right? The the Wistor right rats, you know, all the biomedical. And of, of course, it's a documented fact that they were involved in MK Ultra projects. And this was one of the sub projects back in 69. And they wouldn't have known it back then. The filmmakers by now should have known it. Right, because they should have read uh, Annie Jacobson, and she was put out there because the general public was figuring this out, and they wanted to put some sort of establishment journalist front out there to say, "No, we own that information. We dug it up." No, it's people like Potash who dug the stuff up, right? Or Jim Keith or or Ken Thomas. Those are those are the people that you know that we've been talking about. Or or um, um, well. I can go on and on. I've had many people and more to come uh, people who who come from that uh, background who don't get nearly enough um, attention and they're because their work is um, valid in in the very sense uh, very much uh, today in uh, 2023. So Maskell was the chaplain for the Baltimore Police Department. He had a brother there in the police department too. So you know where that goes, right? I mean, that's another reason why the police department is not going to investigate all the claims, right? He also was the head chaplain for the Maryland uh, Air National Guard. And he had some relationship with Fort Meade. In fact, there was a body that showed up on Fort Meade grounds. There's two murders within a couple weeks of each other. First was, uh, first the, the, this woman was was found. I'm sorry if I can't remember her name. But she was found, and two months later, then um, uh, Sister Sesnick's body was found in a remote area that you'd have to know about in order to access it. And we're talking about 69, right? This is what the beginning of the whole spate of serial killers, the Golden State Killer, the Zodiac Killer, Ted Bundy and all that. And now we've gotten enough literature. We can see the pattern. We knew, know this is just a giant... Pentagon mindfuck on the American people to keep us in fear, to look for, for them for protection, right? And to increase uh, you know, so-called security, right? People are still going to go for security. I, we just saw that in two weeks, right? The programming is very, very strong. You see people who's, who can talk a big game, but as soon as they said, you got to do this and this and this, they were there, man. They were there. Yeah, I'm going to do this for humanity. Right. So anyway, yeah, Potash has this all documented. He's got all the links. Johns Hopkins, the psychiatry direct, uh, director, Johns Hopkins, John C. Whitehorn led, led the department from 41 to 60. This, this is like during World War II. They were doing all these psychiatric experiments to figure out the, the post-war psychiatric uh, world order. Why do you think I keep returning to this idea of psycho-psychiatric dominance and control? Because it's so, such a consistent part of our, especially our post-war history. And it's got to stop. We have to, we have to, first of all, recognize the problem. We have to read these books. And then comes the second part, which is more difficult. And then we have to act on that knowledge. Because talking about it and knowing it and reciting it is a whole world away from doing, right? There's being and there's doing, right? And 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 knowing this, all this knowledge is as good as nothing, unless it's dedicated toward toward a larger struggle, right? Whatever that may be, you know. Uh, and and I'm saying this because a lot of what is passing for information on TubeU and even on Rumble. I'm watching this. It's not anything revelatory. It's just entertainment. Only they're talking about ancient Egypt or they're talking about UFO secret technology of the uh, Diglaka. 
right? Anybody who's been doing this stuff for, for any time will know this is old information, all right? So again, I'm encouraging each of us to stretch our boundaries and look into areas, especially people who have experiential knowledge, right? People who have direct knowledge from the inside of, certain, of the way these certain institutions work, right? So I'd like to see a lot of um, some uh, information that's that's being uh, published by firemen, EMT people, police officers. I think you would you would have a huge market. People want to know what it's like, and we we want to hear everything: the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're not going to get it from academics because you're the most wimpy, cowardly, pusillanimous people in, in the world. And I mention that is because they think they own the world, right? Johns Hopkins, all these psychiatrists. Oh, yeah, we've got all this data, right? I was going to talk about this today, but I'm going to keep it down to 30 minutes. I have this really good book. It's called The World is Lab. And this is where all this empirical research. And by the way, the author, I expected it. She pulls her punch at the end. Oh, this is not conspiracy theory. This is what it was like back then, but we have not, we're not there anymore. So that's a lie, right? She needed to get tenure someplace or a job. So she's not going to be biting the institution that feeds her because the Pentagon runs her employer, right? But if you give it a little bit of a, a sexy, you know, conspiratorial, you know, veneer and said, oh yeah, okay, that's that's really transgressive. That's that's really boundary breaking. Uh, it's not because they're not taking it all the way. And the filmmakers fall down in the fact that they not, by, by the end of this episode seven, I watched it all the way through because I, I want to be fair to the filmmakers. I wanted to make sure I did not miss anything. There was never one mention Never one allusion to MK Ultra, the involvement of a perverted uh, Catholic priest, uh, Merrick, uh, in, involved in this. None whatsoever. So this gives us a, a much better idea of, of the more recent clergy abuse here. This gives us a more uh, realistic view of the role of a Roman Catholic political and economic power in the United States of America and the world, right? This little documentary raises a lot of very important questions. So for that, I'm very grateful. I promised I'd be done by 30 minutes. Hey, Alec, 30 minutes, because I have to really pack it in here. And I want you to join me and watch. I'm going to freshen up my, uh, my tea here, and I'm going to join you and watching my friend and colleague, John O'Loughlin, I guess Monday shows her especially good. <laughs> he's had a day of rest, so I'm sure he's energized. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If I come up with some other information, I'll post it on Patreon. I, I will post the uh, the article by, by uh, John Potash so you can read it line by line and benefit from it if you're a writer and a research researcher. Okay, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.